Good afternoon, drivers. My name is Stephen Montgomery. I'm a safety manager for Schofield Transport. Today, what we're gonna be doing is talking about ro the three-inch roper pump. This is our chemical liquid pump that we use throughout our fleet. Um, we're just gonna go over a few things that drivers are having some issues with and explain some parts. So, let's start right out. When you look at the roper pump, right here as a whole, the first thing that you notice is right off the main shaft here, there's these lock nuts here, and the lock nut here and the adjustment nut here. What this does is it tightens the packing so that you can adjust the packing on the road. All you have to do is loosen up this nut here and tighten this nut up here, just like this, when you're on the road. If, this, if you have product leaking out of this point right here on the front, it's the packing and you can tighten that on the road. So with the pump shut off, equally tighten both sides, this side and on the back side, which is right here in the same location. So it's very simple, two nuts, just tighten them up. Start out with half a churn each, tighten them back up, and then go from there. So that's the first thing that we, that's the most troubling point we have on these roper pumps is leaking at the packing. If it continues to leak after you've already tightened it, then we need to bring it in and get it replaced. The second point that I want to show you is the actual gears of the pump. This is a mechanical pump. And you can see the gears inside. So when we turn the gears, when we turn the main shaft, you'll see that the gears actually rotate. This is what we mean when we say a gear-driven pump. Now, this is, the ex this is the exit, this is the inlet. When you're hitching up to a pump for the first time, it is very important that you check the rotation of the pump. You do this by putting a piece of paper over the, over the internal or the inlet side or on the pressure side, which would be here. You put a piece of paper, say which side is pulling and which side is pushing. So the suction side is always hitched to your trailer. The pressure side is always hitched to the customer. It is very important that you do this. You can actually pump product into your trailer from a customer's st storage tank if you're not correctly hitched up. Very important, let me tell you again. Make sure that the orientation is correct. Pay no attention to what's on the standpipes or on the pipes coming off the pump. Make sure that you physically check which side is suction, which side is pressure. And you can do it with a piece of paper over the pipe or your hand or anything just to feel which side is pulling and which side is pushing. So once we do that, all right, I'm gonna show you the inside of the pump and how it works. On the back side of your pump, you're gonna see this big box right here with a screw coming off of it. This is the actual the bypass for the pump. This right here, this nut, when you adjust this screw right here, there's a spring inside and it adjusts the pressure so that if this is in case there's a block in the line and the pump shuts off or you can't start, you, the pump stops pumping because of a, a blockage in the line someplace. Instead of blowing a, blowing a hose, what will happen is the pump will recirculate within itself. And I'm gonna show you that. So I've taken this apart already just to be able to show you. There's like 10 or 12 bolts on the back side here. But anyways, this will come off right here like this. This is the bypass right here. If you look right in here, you can see that there's a little cup in there which is gonna allow the pressure to release and come back through here. So what happens is that when pressure comes on here, it comes in here, it releases, pushes the spring which is in here, allows the product to come back down around and come right back out here and circulate back through the pump. So if there was a break or a block in the line, this pump is designed so that it recirculates within itself. The problem is, is that when we have a pump like this, a lot of times the drivers make, don't make sure that they're cleaned when they're at the tank wash. The only way to properly clean this is when the tank wash shuts the pressure side off while still putting product into the pump and it forces this open. It's important because if you had a heavy product like a resin or something like that, it would get in here and gum this up so that you could not get it and over a period of time it would actually harden. So this one is operating correctly. It's important that you make sure that they go ahead 
and open this up manually when they're washing the tank. And that's by shutting the pressure side off and letting the inlet side pull the product in and force this to open up. When we talk about a gear driven pump, this is what the pump is actually gonna look like. Right here, if you take off the back side, you'll see that there are some gears. These are the gears that we talk about. So I'm gonna take one out so you can see it. This is what the gear looks like. Not much to it, but you see where the rust is right in here? When we tell you that you need to turn these pumps over on a regular basis, this is why, because the rust in here will collect with the rust up here and this pump will become impossible to turn. So you can see a lot of the older drivers will carry a pipe wrench with them. They'll get on the main shaft on the front where the yoke is and they'll turn the shaft back and forth in order to free that pump up. This is what it looks like when we talk about a gear shaft or gear driven pump, this is what it is. So it just slides in here, locks into this place right here, slides in. Then when the shaft turns, this is what you get right here. We're turning the shaft. You can see that the pump is actually moving and this is the way the product would move. It comes in and is pushed out. This pump can go either way. So it doesn't matter, we rotate the pump, all right, to have it so that we want have the inlet and outlet in the right direction, but it's, it's designed so that it only goes one way, but it can be turned the other way, and we can use it the opposite side just by reversing the body on this. Um, but you don't have to worry about that. This is the way it works, that's the gear-driven pump, and those are the things that you, you should watch for. So uh, I hope that helped you have a better understanding of a roper pump. And if you have any questions about it, just give me a call. They're very simple, easily worked on on in the field. And the reason why we like ropers so much is they handle such a broad spectrum of products from heavy, heavy resins to acetones. So thanks a lot for your time. And as always, drive safe.